Will the clerk please call the roll? Mark Here. 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 Thank you. And tonight we have Principal Rachel Felipe with uh, McKinsey students to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Good evening, thank you so much. It's an honor to be here tonight and I am privileged to be standing next to some amazing students and staff who are gonna talk to you about what we've been doing um, in our English language arts classes. I am Megan Young, I'm the assistant principal at McKenzie and I worked with um, a couple of our fourth grade teachers as they explored project-based learning and coached their students through it. At the start of our toys unit, we, we did the marshmallow challenge. In my group and lots of other groups had to persevere through lots of challenges. One main challenge we all had to persevere through is the marshmallow. At the end, you put the marshmallow on the top of your spaghetti structure. And most of the groups didn't test the marshmallow until the end of what they built. And then for most groups, the marshmallow and their structure fell down. Hi, I'm Matthew. We did a lot of writing in the toys unit. One of the things we did was we researched and wrote about our iconic toy. Um, my toy was remote control toys. We also wrote about picture books and we gave them for our, to our buddy. Hi, my name is Kate and at the beginning of the unit we went to Ramona with one other kid and got paired up with a preschool kid and interviewed them about what to their interests were and then went back, drew out a toy and then either did sewing or woodworking to make a toy that was special to them. Hi, my name is Tegan. Um, so we had to make a toy for our buddy, as you know. So first you had to find a pattern, then you had to trace it on a piece of fabric, then you had to cut it out, um, and then you had to sew every single thing together. And then you had to put, pit, put the finishing touches on your toy and then give it to your buddy. Hi, my name's Andrew. After we knew what our buddy wanted, we decided it, if we wanted it to be a wooden or a stuffed toy. I chose wooden toy because when I played with my buddy, he really liked blocks. We chose what size we wanted the wooden paint. We had to measure how long it would be and design it. Then we sanded it and primed it and then painted over the prime, let it dry, and then gave it to our buddy. Hi, my name is Carter, and before we gave our toy to our buddy, we set up a showcase for parents to learn about our toys. A lot of parents came to my station. I told them... a about my train, picture book, and all the other stuff me and my partner did. Hello, my name is Madeline, and I just want to tell you that seeing the smile on our buddies' faces after we gave them the toy we made, made all that hard work worth it. I would like if kids in the future had the same amazing experience as I did during this unit. I would also like to give a special thanks to Mrs. Eckholm and Mrs. Blumberg for the incredible guidance and support throughout this unit. I'm Mrs. Eckholm. Um, when planning this unit, we looked at the standards taught for informational text in the reading and writing fourth grade. We integrated our social studies unit on innovations by giving the students firsthand experience in creating and developing an innovator's mindset. And we integrated math operation standards and measurement standards by having the students submit a budget, planning, and designing their toy. I'm Darcy Blomberg. Um, also throughout this process, students also developed their communication skills. Beyond just meeting the standards, this unit helped foster real life problem solving, a creative mindset, and pride in their work by creating something special for someone else. The students were able to positively contribute to the Wilmette community by gifting their toy and picture book to a student in Ramona's early childhood program.
Thank you very much, McKinsey students and teachers. And as a parent of someone who did the toy unit last year, I know it was a ton of fun and also a lot of work. Thank you very much. Uh, this month's artwork comes from Paige Lundy's seventh and eighth graders. Uh, this is the artwork that's behind me in the boardroom. Uh, the artwork in this exhibit represents a range of project, projects from 2D art to drawing and painting courses. Seventh graders studied artist Winslow Homer and practiced various watercolor techniques. They also explored the One Sky Initiative, sponsored by Wilmette art artist Ben Whitehouse, and photographed images of the sky. Students discussed climate change and worked to express colors they value in the sky. Eighth graders studied perspective drawing and used their imagination to illustrate an image representing their favorite book or favorite city. And if you have a chance, I highly encourage you to come and check out the artwork more closely later. Uh, this time I'd like to make uh, the standard announcement we make every meeting, which is to remind everyone that this is a public meeting and all are among neighbors and fellow residents. Appropriate conduct is expected from everyone, and we ask that people speak only when called upon, that everyone treat each other kindly and with proper respect, and refrain from distracting behaviors such as loud conversations, cheering, clapping, or booing, and we'll put an asterisk that later when we have new, old and new board members, we may do a little cheering, so just to, just to let you know. Yeah, for me. Yeah. For everyone. Uh, I seek a motion at this time to approve the minutes of the March 18th, 2019 regular and exec executive session meetings. I move to approve the minutes of the March 18th, 2019 regular and executive session meetings. And I request a second. Second. Great. The motion has been made and seconded. Board members, are there any comments, errors, or omissions that we'd like to point out at this time? Seeing none, uh, all those in favor of approving the minutes as submitted, please indicate by saying yay. Yes. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries by general consent. That brings us to our, public, our first public comments period. This is an opportunity for the audience to address the board. Are there any audience members who would like to speak at this time? Okay. Oh, yep, go ahead. Come on forward. Please come forward, I, and I'll remind uh, you to use the microphone, state your name and community of residence, and by board directive, you are allowed three minutes. Good evening. So my name is Beth Feely, resident of Wilmette, uh, and I'm also with a group called Newt Your Neighbors, which is a citizen group that builds community around the ideas of common sense, free enterprise, and the golden rule. So um, I appreciate the time and effort devoted by every board member, but tonight I would like to single out Tracy Kearney and express my sincerest thanks for her service on the school board for these past four years. Tracy's an exemplary board member. She digs into issues. She listens to various viewpoints. She asks tough and thoughtful questions. She is always responsive and she always follows through. She also displays an incredible amount of common sense um, and Will Matt's going to miss having her on this school board. So I wanted to just say, Tracy, thank you for your service and also Tracy's family, thank you for lending her to us. Um, and I just wish you the best in your next chapter. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Is there, uh, why don't you put them right on the table over there? Thanks, Beth. Anybody else who would like to come forward and speak at this time? Yep, come on forward. Once again, I'll remind you, uh, please state your name and community of residence, and you have three minutes. Uh, your mic is not on. Hi. Betsy Hart, I live in Wilmette, um, and I also wanted to thank all of you for your service, but tonight I especially want to thank Tracy. Tracy, you are an amazing voice of reason. You have done your homework like almost no other public official I've ever witnessed. You do not shy away from um, fights that are worthy of being fought for the good of the whole. You... Um, are never afraid of where the facts take you, of what truth is, and of, of being willing to um, go up against prevailing um, orthodoxy um, and challenge it in the best interest of your constituents and the people you serve. And I want to say thank you so much. And I'm not going to put this on the table. I'm going to give it to Tracy. 
Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Is there anybody else who'd like to speak at this time? Okay, we are going to ask that you put the presence on the side, though. That's. Okay. My name is Joan Lassonde, and I'm a Wilmette taxpayer. I've been one for 14 years. I still have children at D39, and I will have them there for the next four years. I would like to also thank the board members for their service, and in particular, one member who had the integrity to stand up for what she believed in. She had the guts to ask the hard questions, and she had the courage to question the status quo, which is really what it all boiled down to, questioning the status quo. And what did she get in return for her four years of service? She got personal attacks, false accusations. During public board meetings, her comments were dismissed, her questions ridiculed, her ideas mocked. There were always demeaning remarks from the board members. If you don't believe me, go back and watch the tapes, because that's the truth. And she did all this not for herself, and certainly not for her family, but for her community and the school district that she loved so much. And as a taxpayer, I just want to thank her for her four years of relentless service. Wish the rest of the board good luck. It's very sad when we have a school board where the members run uncontested, and there's a reason why. So I ask all of you in the next two to four years to just think about that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have any other members who would like to talk at this time? Go ahead and please state your name, community re residence, uh -huh. and you have three minutes. I feel like a slacker for not having brought a present. Sorry. Um, my name is Meg Joseph. My husband and I, together with our three children, have been residents of Wilmette for 10 years, and all my kids have gone to D39 schools. Um, I'd like to thank all of you who have served uh, District 39 as members of the Board of Education. We greatly appreciate your time and dedication. I know how much time it takes um, and how much effort. But I'd like to give a special thanks to Tracy. Um, at our house, we talk to our kids a lot about the value of a great education and just what it means to get a good education. And the reason we moved to Wilmette was because we knew this was where our kids would get a great education. Um, in our opinion, there can be no mo movement towards truth, towards clarity and better understanding, and no movement towards progress without questioning and challenging. And Tracy has exemplified that spirit during her term with D39's Board of Ed. It's not an easy role. Um, we all know that because more of us would do that if it were easy, but it's a tough one. And Tracy took on that role of questioner and challenger with dedication and fearlessness. Tracy, we are so grateful to you for asking the questions that we, your consti constituents, posed and for challenging the majority when necessary. You were often a dissenting vote, and we have the utmost respect for your willingness to be that outlier. You've been a great model to all of us in the community, particularly to our kids who are learning from all of us what it means to be a valuable part of a community. Thank you so much. Also, I offer a warm welcome to the new board members. I hope Tracy's spirit of questioning and challenging will not fade away, but will be taken up by the members of this next board of ed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else who would like to come forward? I see two, so you guys will have to decide who's, who's first. Go ahead. Are you going to do it together? That's fine. Please. OK, please state your names and your community of residence. Sue Blomberg from Wilmette. And Mary Perlman from Wilmette. OK, and you have three minutes. We are just here with our group of friends to thank Alice Schaff for over eight years on the board and over 20 years helping District 39. We greatly appreciate your time and your passion and the desire you have to make the education in our district as successful as it is. So thank you. Just to add on to that, we couldn't ask for a better neighbor. So congratulations, Alice. Thank you very much. That's fine. You can put it there. Anybody else who would like to speak at this time? OK. Thank you all. And uh, moving on, we'll move to the board reports. And that takes us to the committees. Let's start with school finance, which I think Mr. Penzika has. 
The Committee of the Whole met April 15th. The primary to topics were covered in the Finance Committee sections, which I'll summarize. The first topic was flexible furniture for the K through four grades that has been piloted at McKenzie Grade School with the generous support of their PTA. The results were very positive and now the administration is planning to begin introducing this furniture into other schools. A variety of options support different learning styles and different classroom needs when will be installed over time. The Harper construction bids were received and came in slightly below estimates. This will cover needed improvements at Harper as enrollment has increased over the years and will build necessary classrooms to support the kindergarten enrichment option. This will be discussed later in this meeting. We have begun the process of looking at potential next steps in air conditioning our schools. The practice has been to air condition new construction and large spaces. A report was presented that estimates the number of classes that can be accommodated with existing large space air conditioning and cost projections, projections for increasing the large space air conditioning school by school. There were some additional questions, but this was a great first step in understanding where we are and some of the options available. Forecast 5 is a new software tool that was recently purchased by the administration to look at our expenses in greater detail and to open the opportunity to compare line items against other school districts, both in the immediate area as well as similar schools around the state and country. As we better understand what this tool supports, the next step will be to define our goals and metrics. We discussed the operating funds tentative budget. Starting assumptions for revenue and costs were baselined and a deeper dive into several areas has begun. Capital projects is the largest controllable item. A five-year roadmap of needed and proposed items was presented. This gives us a feel of needs over a longer period since capital projects often hit multiple budget years. Another item discussed was our year-over-year -year special education headcount increase due to increasing enrollment needs. Additional items that were covered in the Committee of the Whole included a discussion on the process and timing of becoming more involved in future IASB resolutions. And finally, we began a discussion on the lunch fee policy, which is covered in 4 colon 130. Uh, discussions on costs and other items will continue in the next meeting. Thank you very much. And that takes us to our uh, facility development right. report. The, Thank the you. The facility development committee did not meet this month, but as Frank mentioned, tonight we'll be reviewing and voting on final bids for the Harper Kindergarten Enrichment Construction Project, which commences this summer. Uh, the next uh, Facilities Development Committee meeting will be on May 13th at 8 a.m. as a part of the Committee of the Whole here at the MEC. Thank you very much. That takes us to our liaison reports. Uh, this month we have CRC and IASB reports on our agenda, but in fact we're going to push off those reports until next month. Uh, because uh, the member who was uh, the representative there was a bit ill earlier this week. Um, and that takes us to Education Foundation, which I think is John. Yeah, that was me. Um, so last Wednesday, April 18th, or 17th, uh, there was a unbelievably well attended um, Ed Foundation meeting. It was a fantastic meeting. I will keep my remarks about it to a minimum, but it's hard. Um, so at the Ed Foundation meeting, uh, our own Ray Lechner was recognized with a special fund in recognition of his leadership of the community and the district. Um, it's called the Ray of Light Fund, and um, I think that was very exciting. Um, and the second thing was uh, Dr. Peter Auer, who I think I got his name right, um, a seventh grade science teacher did a fantastic presentation on on what he's doing with um, these modicams, right? So they're, you know, I don't know, they're modicams. Um, and <laughs> microscopes with cameras on them, thank you. Uh, so it was great and inspiring. And, um, and thirdly, it, it just went on and on. Um, the movie night was went well, and they announced that they have the pub crawl coming up on May 16th, and they already have a date for the fashion show, which is November 13th, and then it went on and on. So it was, it was a great meeting. Um, I, 
I'm sorry I don't go to all of them. That's it. Great, thank you very much. It was That was a, an eventful uh, meeting. Uh, and that takes us to the, oh, I was gonna mention for anybody here, please make sure you check out the Ray of Light banner out in the hallway. It's beautiful and I thought it was a, a wonderful and appropriate way to honor Ray's service. Uh, and that takes us to legislative update. Great, thank you, Mr. Steen. Um, not trying to suck all the air out of the room on my last legislative report, but there's been quite a lot not, happening not your fault. here. Yes, <laughs> not at all. Um, and uh, I apologize in advance for reading so much, but I had to get it all down. Uh, since we last met, the House of Representatives and Senate spent the majority of their time working through bills on their in their respective chamber floors while also amending bills in committee to posture for the passage with uh, May 31st, which is when the General Assembly convenes. Um, Pete, I'm just gonna start with the highlights. There's about seven big bills that we should all be aware of. The PE bill, we've discussed it before, PE bill, Senate bill 1189 um, was actually halted in the Senate as one of its sponsors, um, I think it's Senator Holmes, uh, announced she would not be moving um, on Senate Bill 1189 and intends to hold meetings in May to find a resolution with the opponents, opponents like IASB and Ed Red, um, uh, associations that we, uh, that represent us, that we buy into. Um, anyway, they're gonna take their time with that. The companion bill on the House side, House Bill 2234 is still pending on their floor. Um, so that's just a good, um, uh, this is a good example with the PE bill of just what advocating can do. Um, teacher salary, because that was geared to go right through. Um, teacher sal salary, Senate Bill 10, um, would increase the minimum teacher salary to 40K per year by 2023. The House um, approved its minimum teacher salary bill by a vote of 79 to 31. That bill has now been sent to the Senate. And the Senate version was passed as well this last week. Um, so that's just waiting for their both houses, alternative movements to send it to the governor and see what he does with that. Um, consolidation, the consolidation bill, Senate bill 1838 and its counterpart House bill three, uh, 3053. Um, they both just uh, to sum up address four school district forced school district consolidation. Specifically, the bills would um, identify before May 1st of 2020 next year, no less than 25% of the school districts in Illinois that will be required to hold a referendum to consolidate in the next general election, which would be 2020 as well. Um, Senate Bill 1838 is still pending on the Senate floor as of three days ago. And yes, and both the houses have been out of session for their spring break, so it still should be. Um, on the Senate floor in House Bill 3053, was approved by the House last month and has been sent to the Senate floor for their action. Then, um, uh, we've got uh, Senate Bill 2075, uh, which is lowering the compulsory age for students from age six by September 1st to age five, by May 31st. Upon further review of this bill, it seems that the language has been problematic and can read to mandate students who turn age five by May 31st of the 2020-21 school year to be enrolled in kindergarten when they are only four years of age. An amendment is expected from ISBE shortly to clarify the language to ensure the parents will still have the ability to hold their child back from kindergarten. And finally, um, this has to do with the 6% rule. Uh, three bills have been introduced that would amend the TRS and SURS articles of the Illinois Pension Code to revert back to the 6% rule for end of career earnings increases for participants. There's three bills, Senate Bill 1952, Senate Bill 60, and House Bill 350. As a reminder, when the evidence-based funding um, was passed at uh, end of 2017, it was lowered, um, part of that was lowering the um, end of year, often referred to as salary spikes, um, to 3% versus 6%. Um, you can still go 6%, but it, the local school boards or local districts would have to be making up for that extra 3% instead of it going to the state. 
the trend there looks like these bills are going to revert it back to the 6% rule. Each of these bills would require a TAS or SURS covered employer to make an additional employer contribution. So what I was just talking about for a participant whose earnings for any period used to determine the final rate of earnings uh, period, which is commonly referred to as FRE, exceed the participant's earnings for the previous year by more than 6% instead of the current 3% that it was, that happened in 2017, maybe it was 18. Um, Senate Bill 1952 passed the Senate and is now in the House, and House Bill 350 passed the House and it is now in the Senate, and Senate Bill 60 sits in assignments. That's all we got. It looks like they're all ready to go um, when they convene, when they resume on April 30th. You got April 30th to May 31st to watch everything. Great, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, and that takes us to our information items. Ray. Yes, and we have uh, no written communication for the board this month. Uh, next, I'm gonna talk about some administrative, uh, uh, new, some new administrators that we have in District 39. Along with our superintendent, we've uh, done some more hiring, and I'd like to begin with Dana Nasiakis. She's chosen as McKenzie's interim principal for the 2019-20 school year. Uh, with the principal position at McKenzie opening up so late in the year, incoming superintendent Dr. Kremiscoli and I both agreed an interim position for McKenzie was the best way to go. The district is fortunate to have such a well-qualified person internally. Dana has been the assistant principal at Central Elementary for the past two years. She holds a bachelor's degree in elementary ed from the University of Illinois, a master's in education from DePaul, and a master's in ed leadership from Northeastern Illinois University. Before coming to District 39, she taught in District 31 at Winkleman Elementary and then District 28 at Northridge, Northbrook Junior High. At Central School, Dan demonstrated strengths in instructional coaching and effectiveness in developing cohesiveness among students and parents and staff. With her deep knowledge of social emotional learning, she creates a positive learning environment that meets the needs of every student. Dana, welcome. Thank you. Good evening, District 39 community and Board of Education members. Um, I appreciate the opportunity to be the interim principal at McKenzie School and to continue calling District 39 my home. I'm excited to join the McKenzie team and lay roots in such a wonderful community of students, families, and professionals. McKenzie has had a strong leadership over the years, and I look forward to continuing to empower students and foster collegial relationships. I'd like to congratulate Dr. Lechner on his retirement and thank him for his continued support and guidance. I am looking forward to working alongside Dr. Kremascoli in the future. Another special thank you to Becky Lippman for her mentorship at Central. And finally, a huge thank you to the Central community for their kindness and support. It has been a true pleasure serving as their assistant principal. I'm looking forward to a strong start at McKenzie. Thank you. Thank you very much. Congratulations, and we're thrilled to welcome you as the interim principal at McKenzie. So we had two uh, assistant principals be promoted to principal positions this year, which means we opened up two assistant principal uh, positions. First, I'd like to welcome Anthony Haddock. Anthony is recommended as the new assistant principal for Central and McKenzie. Anthony is currently a third grade teacher at Central. P prior to District 39, he taught fourth grade at Estrella Vista STEM Academy in Avondale, Arizona. Anthony received his bachelor's degree in early childhood education from Western Michigan and received a master's in educational leadership from Arizona State University. Anthony, welcome. Good evening, members of the board. It's an honor to be recognized this evening. Thank you, Dr. Lechner and Dr. Kremascoli for the chance to introduce myself and express gratitude for this opportunity to serve District 39 as an assistant principal at Central and McKenzie Elementary Schools. I would also like to take a moment to thank Becky Lippman and Dana Nasiakos for their leadership, guidance, and support of me working toward my goals and becoming a school leader. I am grateful for the opportunity to continue my work alongside of each of you and the Wilmette community. Thank you. Thank you very much and welcome. We will have the... 
Dr. Kremaskoli was an integral part of helping us hire the assistant principals. And next, I'd like to welcome Linda Morick. Linda is recommended for the new fifth grade assistant principal at Highcrest. Linda recently taught fourth and fifth grades at River Trails School District 26 for 16 years. She obtained both a bachelor's in early childhood education and a master's degree in curriculum and instruction from the University of Illinois, Champaign. She also earned a master's degree in educational leadership from Northeastern Illinois University. Welcome, Linda. Thank you very much. I am so excited. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to join the Highcrest team as the fifth grade administrator. I am really looking forward to working for District 39 this fall. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much. Congratulations and welcome to D39. And we have, we have more change. As we know, uh, Holly Golden, our communications director, is retiring in June. She's going along with me. And we, as a result, uh, Dr. Kremaskoli, we're carefully uh, interviewing this position as well. <laughs> I'd like to uh, welcome Chike Aruku. Uh, Chike is being uh, recommended as the next communications director. Chike has been the communications director for the last four years in Kenilworth District 38. Prior to District 38, he worked for three years at the Gannett Media Com Company reporting local news throughout Central Ohio. Chike also served as the assistant director of communications at Case Western Reserve University. School of Medicine. Chike has a Bachelor of Science degree in news writing and editing from the University of Akron. Chike, welcome. There's a microphone there for you. Just push the button. Okay. Um, there we go. Communication director here. Um, <laughs> I, I really wanted to thank uh, the school board, um, Dr. Lechner, um, Dr. Kremaskoli, for the opportunity to become the new communication director here. Um, uh, working in Kenilworth, it's just been really uh, nice to study Wilmette from afar. Um, now I get to experience kind of what it is like to be on the inside. Um, I look forward to working with uh, Holly uh, while she's still here uh, to learn about the school district, learn about the customs, traditions, uh, the community here. Uh, so we can continue uh, to have an excellent communication program. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much, GK, and welcome. <laughs> Next, it's the annual student registration, and it's time. It's that time of the year. Uh, the District 39 annual student registration has begun. Last week, parents were sent an email with login and general registration instructions. We begin student scheduling soon, so we ask all parents to register your children. Next, um, in an effort to better uh, make better connections with our neighbors, residents who do not have children at school now have a new District 39 neighbor email distribution. These email lists will provide news about district changes at individual schools or school events or construction to those that live near school buildings. Residents can sign up at on our website by choosing the neighbor email list for their school of choice. We will also be sharing this news through the village email on our website, newsletters, and on social media. So everyone, please feel free to share this news with your neighbors. And next is the Freedom of Information Act. Uh, the district re three, received three FOIA this month. This month, uh, Benthony, Benthony Simpson of Smart Procure submitted a commercial FOIA request for all purchase orders and vendor ID numbers, names, address, contacts, and email addresses. Additionally, Olivia Delonian of NBC5 Chicago requested documents regarding school buildings and school storm shelters. Next, Esteban Barraza requested information regarding the superintendent's administrative assistant and board secretary position, including compensation, stipends, job description, as well as the 2018-19 Board of Education meeting schedule, including regular and special meetings. And those are the announcements. Thank you very much. And with that, we move on to annual business. We'll start with Harper Construction. As District 39 steps toward kindergarten enrichment, each elementary school re will require some construction. Harper is the first with construction to begin this summer. Harper's construction project will require two summers to complete. The district received many qualified bidders, and the bids came in lower than estimated. The bids will be ready for board approval tonight, and Ms. Crispino has this report. Thank you, Dr. Lechner. On April 4th, we had the bid opening for the Harper Elementary School construction project which includes construction of three new classrooms. This space will support the rollout of kindergarten enrichment and moving the therapeutic intervention program from Central to Harper in order to make space at Central for kindergarten enrichment. 
The total base bids came in at 3.5 million, which was less than the 3.6 million we were estimated in our projections. We have worked closely with Nicholas and Associates and STR throughout this process, and we are recommending approval of the construction bid. Great, do board members have any questions at this time? I should note that as you heard earlier, we went through this uh, and we've gone through this in several different committee meetings, so I think board members have heard a lot about it already. Terrific. That takes us to the next item. Yes, and this is uh, the variance for fire protection system. This too was discussed at the school uh, finance committee. With Harper uh, construction, we require a new fire alarm system and we're asking for a variance. The District 39 wants to continue to use its sprinklers rather, rather than a new voice evacuation system. And Ms. Crispino has more details. Thank you. Based on occupancy, Illinois school code requires a voice evacuation fire alarm system for the Harper addition. The existing building has a traditional horn strobe notification system. It can be confusing to students to be in a building with two different fire alarm systems. We received input from STR's engineers, the Illinois State Board of Education, the North Cook Intermediate Service Center for the Regional Office of Education, as well as the Wilmette Fire Department. Code does not require sprinklers in the Harper edition. However, the input received was that sprinklers can be considered superior protection to the voice evacuation system. So we are recommending the board approve the variance with the resolution to use sprinklers instead of the voice evac system. Okay, thank you. Do board members have questions on this one? Yeah, go ahead. I just had uh, one addition to that. Um, besides the sprinklers being more appropriate and more efficient, I think it was a really good point that was brought up in the various meetings that it's also less disruptive for the students. The um, announcement coming over the air saying fire, 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 um, and all the uh, ramifications of that, it's, it's good that you bring those type of thoughts into the discussions when we're looking at these type of things. Great, thank you. Any other comments? Okay. I think that takes us to our 2020 operating funds. Yes, and we have our draft tentative budget for you to review this evening. Uh, the operating funds represent 98% of our total budget. Uh, fiscal year 20 budget revenue, revenue for operating funds is projected to be around 63.1 million, which is a 3.2% increase over the prior year's budget. The operating fund expenditures are at 61.5 million, representing a 4.2% increase from the fiscal year 19 budget. <coughs> Uh, we have additional expenditures of 3.8 million, which includes con all the construction costs that we talked uh, earlier about, including Highcrest as well as Harper. Results in uh, net overall projected uh, spending deficit of 2.1 million. And Ms. Crispino has this report. Thank you, Dr. Lechner. As I start with presenting the tentative budget, we'll start with the assumptions that are built in. First, we'll start with the local revenue assumptions. These include the following. Property tax revenue assumes an increase of 2.1% CPI from the 2018 levy and a 1.9% increase, sorry, a 1.9% for the 2019 levy, plus an estimated 413,000 in new property growth. New property growth is based on a five-year historical average. Levy collections are estimated at 98% net of refunds based on historical collections. Interest revenue is budgeted at 1.8% of the prior year's fund balance. Next, we have our state and federal revenue assumptions. Evidence-based funding is projected at our actual fiscal year 19 allocation. Grant revenues for fiscal 20, year 20 remain unchanged in the tentative budget at this time. This may be adjusted when allocations are released by the state. In addition, the budget assumes the district will receive all four payments from the state. In fiscal year 19 so far, our district has received one payment from fiscal year 18 for the categoricals, and as of this morning, we've, re we've received two for fiscal year 19. Next, we have our expenditure assumptions. Salary costs are estimated to increase 4.6%. Licensed staff salaries are being negotiated, and support staff salaries are increasing 2.1% per contract in fiscal year 20. The tentative budget reflects projected staffing levels based on current enrollment numbers. In addition, it includes two licensed staff that were added in fiscal year 19 and 6.4 licensed staff in fiscal year 20 to support our special education program. Benefit costs are estimated to increase 1.8%. Benefits are based on current enrollment and actual insurance rates for fiscal year 1920. There are two construction projects that are included in the fiscal year 20 budget. 
The first was the $3.5 million Highcrest construction for the Library Media Technology Center addition, which included large space air conditioning and a special education classroom renovation. Also, there's a $3.5 million at Harper, which will add the two new classrooms to support kindergarten enrichment, as well as the third classroom for the therapeutic intervention program. These assumptions form the foundation for the development of the fiscal year 20 tentative budget. Next, we will look at specific fund information. The education fund is the largest fund and contains budgets to provide for the basic instruction of students and the day-to-day -day educational activities of the district. The revenues in this fund have a projected overall increase of 1.7%, mostly due to an increase in local revenues, which account for 92% of the revenues for this fund. In addition to a 1.2% increase in property revenue, there is an increase in interest revenue due to higher projected rates and an increase of 118,000 for projected special ed tuition payments from other districts. Expenditures have an overall projected increase of 4.7%. Salaries and benefits combined account for 89% of the ad fund expenditures. Salaries are projected to increase 4.75% in fiscal year 19 due to contracted salary increases and special ed staffing increases. The tentative tw fiscal year 20 budget anticipates a 2.3% increase in benefits in the ed fund based on the most current enrollment estimates and staffing increases. There is an increase in supplies of 8.4%, which is mostly due to projected cost for the science curriculum rollout. There is an increase of 14.3% in outplaced tuition costs based on projected enrollment for fiscal year 20. The educational fund is projected to end the fiscal year with a fund reserve of $25.7 million after a transfer of $4 million to the Operations and Maintenance Fund for construction projects. Next, we have the Operations and Maintenance Fund. This fund contains the budgets necessary to maintain the buildings and grounds of the districts. Operations and maintenance revenues are projected to have an overall increase of 8.6% based on the distribution of the levy. Expenditures are projected to have a slight decrease of 0.3%. Purchase services are expected to increase 13.5% and they are in line with fiscal year 19 actuals. This is due to architect and construction management purchase service fees related to Highcrest and Harper construction projects. Operations and maintenance capital outlay expenditures are expected to decrease by 20% this year due to a decrease in one-time security projects in fiscal year 19. The fund includes the following transfers coming into the fund. A $4 million permanent transfer from the education fund to operations and maintenance for construction. There's also a $4 million transfer from bond proceeds in the working cash fund to operations and maintenance also for construction. Transfers out of the fund include $7 million transfer to capital projects for the High Crest and Harper construction projects and $800,000 transfer to debt service. The operations and maintenance fund balance reserve at the end of 2020 is estimated to be $4.7 million. In addition, we will need to do a resolution for an interfund loan similar to last year to cover any deficits from month to month for construction costs. This interfund loan would be repaid by the end of fiscal year 20. Next, we have the transportation fund. It contains budgets necessary for the transportation of students. Revenues are projected to have an overall decrease of 0.8% based on the anticipated distribution of the levy and receiving four payments from the state. This is a planned decrease due to reduce the fund balance through the levy allocation. The budget for state mandated categorical grants includes four payments. Expenditures are expected to have an overall increase of 9.6% due to annual cost increase and increase in outplaced students. The transportation fund reflects a year-end projected deficit of 169,000, and the balance at June 30th, 2020 is estimated to be 1.3 million. The next fund contains the budgets for the distribution's contribution to Social Security, Medicare, and the Illinois Municipal Retirement Fund. Revenues are projected to over an overall increase of 9.7% based on the distribution of the levy. Last year, the levy allocation was lower in this fund due to an intentional decrease in the fund balance to required levels. Expenditures are expected to increase 3.5%, and the increased costs are related to the increase in salaries. This fund reflects the year-end projected surplus of $9,000, and the balance at June 30th, 2020 is estimated to be $642,000. Next, we have the working cash fund. This fund enables the board to have money in the treasury for the district's short-term cash flow needs. 
Budgeted revenues are projected to increase $13,000, mostly due to increased interest revenue due to a higher projected interest rate. In other sources and uses, the working cash fund assumes a bond refunding issue comes into working cash and transfers to operations and maintenance for construction. The working cash fund reflects a year-end projected surplus of $105,000, and the balance at June 30th, 2020 is estimated to be $1.2 million. Last, we have the TORP fund. This fund is primarily to fund business insurance liability and property insurance, workers' compensation insurance, and unemployment coverage. The TORP fund revenue is projected to increase by $210,000 based on the anticipated distribution of the levy. TORP fund expenditures are estimated to be pretty much flat. During the months ahead, as more accurate information becomes available, expenditure estimates may be adjusted to reflect actual changes in tort insurance costs for fiscal year 20. The TORP fund reflects a year-end projected plan deficit of $59,000, and the balance at June 30th, 2020 is estimated to be $490,000. In summary, excluding the TRS on behalf contributions, the total fiscal year 20 budgeted revenue for the operating funds is projected to be 63.1 million, which is a 3.2% increase over the prior year's budget. The fiscal year 20 budgeted operating fund expenditures are estimated at 61.5 million, an increase of 4.2% from fiscal year 19 budget. There is an additional 3.8 million of expenditures and other uses due to construction. This results in a projected overall operating funds deficit for fiscal year 20 of 2.1 million. The deficit is due to the funding of our planned construction projects with $7 million of expenditures in the operations and maintenance fund for fiscal year 20. The district should maintain a fund balance of 55.5% of its operating expenditures at June 30th, 2020. Are there any questions? Board member questions. Great, seeing none, uh, and again, we went over this extensively in Finance Committee. Thank you very much for the report. And that brings us uh, forward to the 2018-2019 final school year calendar. Yes, and due to uh, weather-related school closing in November 26, uh, the school calendar needs to be adjusted. The Illinois State Board of Education refers to school closing days as emergency days. Because the district meets the legally required number of student attendance days, one emergency day is moved to November 26th. However, the last day of school will continue to be June 14th and it will continue to be an early release day. Great. Thank you very much. Any questions on that? Okay. Next, uh, the Section 125 plan specifies the, lo the logistics that we need to offer flexible spending accounts, dependent care reimbursement, and health reimbursement arrangements for staff members. The District 39 plan was last updated in 2014. Since that last update, the district has joined Cooperative 90s and the insurance plan year has changed. The resolutions tonight align the dates of the health reimbursement arrangement, HRA, with the new plan year. Additionally, this permits the superintendent to adjust any plan logistics to align with the law as well as board approved plan changes. Dr. Glowacki, anything to add? Nope, that's it. <laughs> okay, any questions? Just, do you, what is the plan year shift to? It's June, right? Was it May? So right. our insurance plan year prior to joining the cooperative was September 1st through August 31st. Our plan year now, at, when we're part of the cooperative, is June 1st through May 31st. Okay. Other questions? Okay. That takes us to the board policy review. Yes, the board policies have been revised based on board feedback from the first reading. Additionally, based upon the, the Committee of the Whole discussion, policy 4 colon 130 food service has not been changed at this time. However, a review can be considered after the Nutrition Committee completes its work. Dr. Glowacki, anything to add? Just that the highlights, I highlighted in yellow any changes that were made from first read to second read, so that's Thank what you. that that's represents. Thank uh, you, Any questions, comments, observations on the board policies? Okay, seeing none. Uh, that takes us to our second opportunity for uh, the audience to address the board. Are there any audience members who would like to speak at this time? Oh, yep, come on forward. As a reminder, please uh, state your name and your community of residence. And you didn't speak the first time, so you have three minutes. If anybody chooses to speak again, go for it. Uh, please turn on the mic, though. Uh, my name is Carol Ann Zerdani. I live in Wilmette. I've been a resident here for 12 years. 
um, two kids in Nutrier and one in college. They all went through District 39. Um, I just wanted to thank Tracy Kearney for her service and for asking the tough questions, clarifying what the board is discussing and representing all residents of Wilmette. She has personally taught my new chair freshman to educate himself on all sides of an issue and ask the tough questions. And for that, I appreciate. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments at this time? Great, seeing none. That takes us to our action uh, items and the cons consent agenda. Uh, are there any items that the board would like to have pulled from the consent agenda? Seeing none, Mr. Panzica, will you proceed with a motion? I move to approve the personnel report dated April 23, nine, or 2019. I move to approve the award base package plus alternative one bid specifications for Harper Elementary School, three classroom addition and renovation for a total of $3,494,982. I move to adopt the attached resolution approving the variance for the Harper Fire Protection System and approve the attached application for approval of variance as written. I move to approve the appointments of Linda Morick as the 2019-2020 Highcrest Middle School fifth grade assistant principal and Anthony Haddock as the 2019-2020 Central McKenzie Assistant Principal. I move to approve the 2018-2019 final school year calendar. I move to approve the attached resolution to restate the District 39 Section 125 Flexible Benefits Plan. I move to approve the attached resolution restating section 105 health reimbursement arrangement. I move to approve as second and final reading of the Board of Education policies 4 colon 63 quality purchasing 4 colon 70 energy and resource conservation 4 colon 80 accounting and audits 4 colon 90 school activity funds. 4 colon 95 petty cash, 4 colon 100 insurance management, 4 colon 110 transportation, 4 colon 115 bus warm up, 4 colon 130 food services, and 4 colon 140 waiver of student fees. I move to approve to release to the public the executive session minutes of April 28, 2015, August 27, 2018, October 15, 2018, October 22, 2018, November 5, 2018, November 12, 2018, November 14, 2018, November 26, 2018, November 27, 2018, November 28, 2018, November 29, 2018, December 10, 2018, meeting one, December 10, 2018, meeting two, December 12, 2018, De December 13, 2018, December 17, 2018, meeting one, December 17, 2018, meeting two, January 14, 2019, and January 28, 2019. I move to dispose of executive session audio recordings pursuant to district policy for the following dates. November 14, 2016, December 12, 2016, February 13, 2017, February 27, 2017, March 20, 2017, April 3, 2017, and April 25, 2017. I move to approve the accounts payable for bills listed between March 19, 2019 and April 23, 2019 in the following amounts. Educational fund, $418,807.65. 
O and M fund two hundred ninety nine thousand two hundred thirty nine dollars and sixty nine cents. Transportation fund one hundred fifty thousand one hundred twenty two dollars and eighty nine cents. Capital projects fifty five thousand four hundred twenty two dollars. For a total all funds of nine hundred twenty three thousand five hundred ninety two dollars and thirty three cents. I move to approve the manual checks issued between March 19, 2019 and April 23, 2019 in the following amounts. Educational fund, $574,181.34. O&M fund, $5,269.09. Transportation fund, $133.77. For a total all funds of $579,000. Five hundred and eighty-four dollars and twenty cents. So, for the sake of clarity, the Harper bids construction. We're going to uh, remake that motion because we have some extra things we have to read. Go ahead. Okay. Um, I move to award the base package plus alternative one bid specifications for the Harper Elementary School three classrooms addition and renovation for a total of three million four hundred ninety-four thousand nine hundred eighty-two dollars. This includes. Albright Enterprises for an amount not to exceed $807,000. J&E Duff Inc. for an amount not to exceed $308,317. McKenney Steel for an amount not to exceed $73,221. Monarch Construction for an amount not to exceed $385,500. L. Marshall Roofing for an amount not to exceed $122,348. Cruel Window Company for an amount not to exceed $194,467. Hargrave Builders Inc. for an amount not to exceed $409,450. Nelson Fire Protection for an amount not to exceed $35,714. Chas F. Buckner and Sons for an amount not to exceed $172,990. DeKalb Mechanical for an amount not to exceed $611,975. Argonne Electric Company for an amount not to exceed $374,000. Again, for a total Harper Elementary School project cost of $3,494,982. Thank you very much. You earned your pay That's tonight. Why I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have a second? Oh, second. The motion has been made and seconded. Would the clerk please call the roll? Yes. 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 Uh, the yeses have it, and the motion is carried. And that brings us to an opportunity for comments by the audience prior to reorganization. Are there any comments from the audience prior to our reorganization meeting? Okay, seeing none. Uh, that brings us to comments by board members prior to reorganization. And uh, just before we get started, I'm going to make my own comments. So I wanna say thank you very much to both Tracy Kearney and Alice Schaff. I've had the pleasure of serving with both of you for uh, four years and six years respectively. Um, and I think that the, uh, you know, one thing that the community should know is how much work you both have done, not just on the board, but before the board. So I think, you know, Alice, we were talking before that you have been serving in various capacities for 23 years, District 39, as it goes through all of your, uh, your kids. You, you've, as you said, so colorfully slopping out the lunches to, to kids all the way up to being a board member, including CRC, uh, the Education Foundation, and uh, a number of room parents, all, all levels, and it's been a wonderful uh, service, and we certainly appreciate it. And Tracy, we first met, I think, on the Education Foundation, um, and already at that time, you had the reputation of having been an incredible parent at Ramona, having led in many different capacities. I know that you led the PTA there, you led the Education Foundation when I was on the Education Foundation, and you've been uh, you know, a, a very um, active and thoughtful member of the board, and you know, I appreciate it. So thank you very much. Uh, to both of you, and, and the community should definitely know 
that the amount of work that these two women have put in has been an incredible service to the community. And so I'd like to say thank you personally. Thank you. Are there any other comments from board members? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Thanks, Tracy. I just want to, it's a hard act to follow, but I do want to just personally thank you, uh, Tracy and Alice, for your years of service and your demonstrated leadership. And I think the one thing that I've really valued about uh, this board is both diversity of opinion, skills, and interest. Um, and I've learned a lot from both of you. Um, and Mark, I also want to take this moment to thank you for being an outstanding board president. Um, I've been humbled by your leadership. Um, and I think that you've governed this board or led this board um, through some really interesting times and you did it with um, grace and professionalism. So thank you very much. Thank you. That's nice of you to say. Any other comments from board members? Oops. That's, that's very good. I was going to say, I think that is the first time that's ever happened uh, that I recall. So uh, any other comments? But do yeah, you want to go, go first, Tracy? Age before beauty. Oh, come on. <laughs> All right. Okay, I want to Go say ahead. thank you very much for your kind comments. Um, it has been an honor and a privilege to serve on the District 39 board uh, for the past eight years. Um, I'm extremely proud of the accomplishments of the district over, the, over this time frame, and I have really enjoyed working with Ray, the entire administrative uh, staff, uh, past and present, and my fellow board members, also past and present. Uh, I've learned a great deal in my years helping to lead District 39, and I only hope that I have contributed to the success of this district half as much as I have learned from all of the committed and exceptional people whom I've met along the way. Uh, I'm extremely optimistic about the future of the district and about the new board that's about to be seated. Uh, I wish the new Board of Education, our new superintendent, Carrie Cremasoli, and the entire staff wisdom, insight, creativity and patience along with a little humor and luck as they capably lead our exceptional school district forward. I leave the Board of Education looking forward to a new, ven uh, new ventures but also with a bit of sadness as 23 or so years of involvement with our Wilmette schools are now behind me. I um, want to thank the residents of Wilmette for electing me to represent them and their children on the Board of Education. Thank you. Thank you. And Tracy. Thank you, Mark. Um, mine aren't as eloquent as uh, Alice, but I too want to thank, uh, take a few minutes to really share um, my gratitude for having the opportunity to have served the District 39 community for the last few years on the board. But really, um, in times like this, when you sit down, actually this morning, to reflect on what's all happened since you've been here, um, I went back to, and I am, if anyone knows me, I'm, I'm okay with not everyone getting a trophy. Um, <laughs> so I do have just some special thank yous. Um, and I went back to, and Ray, I'm just gonna start with you. Um, the first thing I did here was um, get involved with the early childhood playground and I do pick favorites, and that has been my favorite um, uh, 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 project. Um, I still drive by there. It, it launched everything that seemed to come, and Ray, it's where I first got to meet yeah. you. And um, through that, from that, we went to the auditorium, to PTA, to Ed Foundation, to that tree on the wall out there. Um, everything's been, there's been a lot of discussions and while we have not agreed on everything, um, I have to say that I think it's been a really nice and respectful relationship and I won't ever forget it. Um, and I really appreciate that you have always been open to talk to me about what I want to talk about and um, be able to talk to me again the next day, regardless. <laughs> um, I'd also want to say the same thing, um, Heather Lewacki is sitting next to me and she walked in to Ramona um, when, to a really aggressive PTA um, just starting. And I want to say thank you to her for allowing all that to happen. And really, again, for taking my son's hand when he needed a hand to be held. <coughs> and um, we won't forget that. And I, I do want to say three things on behalf of my children 
who do. I asked them what their most impactful things were, or teachers, so to speak. And I just have to give it a shout out to 8A um, in uh, Wilmette Junior High School. You guys know who you are. Um, Joey has a big one for D. St. Aubin. He says, I'll never forget her. Made her smile, him smile every day and really taught him math. Um, uh, Charlie Kearney will never forget Mrs. Teotis. He says to this day, scariest teacher ever, he thought, and he will never, he thinks that um, she's laid the foundation for her forever. And I wanna say Mrs. Karwowski for William Kearney. Um, to this day in our house, we say garbage if anyone's talking or cheating or looking around because that's what she warned Will in class for a test and he's been terrified ever since. And um, a special one, and I will have to say my two um, I want to, um, I stand behind them forever, Mr. Toy and Mr. Shaft, those avid Sox fans out there, um, really taught my boys um, the success and the fun of a friendly banter with Cubs fans, and I think that's a nice way to grow up, and those are examples that need to be set in school, too, on how to do that. And finally, speaking of some friendly banter, um, I really do want to, and this is not planned, um, I was, um, I'm very thankful for the people who showed up. I'm somewhat embarrassed, I'm not good at that stuff. But I too wanted to thank those constituents who knew how much courage it took to stand up and ask a question of board members that you've elected and are here to represent you. Um, I want to say thank you to Betsy Hart, Beth Feely, Gail, who ran for school board, Stacy Worley, Chris Lewis, Kathy Miles, Joan Lassonde, um, Carol, Ann, Carol Ann, Zerdani Enright. Um, it, you, you, you started a conversation. And um, there's, just know, there is never, ever anything wrong with coming to that mic and writing letters and asking what, hi, and wow, and, and how of the people that you've elected to represent you. Remember that you are the client and the employer in this town. This is your community as well. This is your planet and these are your children. So um, I'm, I stand shoulder to shoulder with you. I liked all the other comments too, whether we agree or don't agree. Engagement is important. And I leave you with this. I hope if anything, you stay informed with your local boards. Illinois, we hear the news, et cetera. I can tell you right now, you can make the biggest difference on this level. While the national and even the state politics are far more sexy and far more, your effect will be here. Um, and uh, don't leave this conversation. Uh, stuff's happening out there. You just heard me read a myriad of bills going through. All of those affect us, no matter what. Um, these are your dollars, this is your state. This is your country, this is your community, and I thank you all for participating. And finally, I was grateful to be elected by those that elected me to serve, to have had a seat at this table, um, I'm hoping others do, and to have been part of the conversation. And I'm looking forward to remaining part of that conversation put over there. <laughs> so okay. thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, and that takes us to one of my favorite traditions in D39. For those of you who haven't noticed, all around this building there are pieces of artwork. And if you look underneath them, each one of them is dedicated to a uh, former board member. And so this is the opportunity where we get to dedicate some art. Thank you very much. And this is exactly my favorite thing as well. And um, we've been doing this tradition for many, many years, and um, I'm really excited to uh, share some pieces of art for our outgoing board members. And it is true, I have known both of you much longer than your tenure on the board, and I've greatly appreciated your support and um, your engagement, so thank you. We're gonna start with um, Alice Schaff, and we're gonna ask that Mia Biederman from Central First Grade come up. Mia Biederman and Alice Schaff. Okay, I'm gonna stand right here, Mia. Here's Alice Schaff. Wait till you see this, folks. This is first grade. 
And Mia, yes. <laughs> and Mia, do you want to tell us anything about how you made this? It took a very long time to make it and very hard work. It's beautiful. And do you know that this is going to be hanging on the walls of this district forever? No. Yes. Well, thank you for this donation. Okay. Thank you, Mia. It was wonderful. Yes. We get to keep it. Next, I'd like to welcome Benjamin Toft, sixth grade at Highcrest, and Tracy Kearney. Welcome, Benjamin. Way cool. Way cool. I guess I'll show it. Okay. I'm going to hold it right here. Okay. You want to tell us a little bit about this piece of art and what inspired you to make it? Uh, hmm. I don't know. It took, me, yeah, it took me a long time to make it. Yeah. And I see that there's some, um, what are those things right there? Uh, they're just scraps of like magazines and things. Beautiful. Okay, very good. Thank you. Thank you very much. And those are beautiful pieces of art. Thank you to both of the students who donated those. And at this time, and as much as, as, much as there is no further business to come before this board, uh, a motion for adjournment sine die is in order. Uh, may I have such a motion? I move, I move to adjourn CA DA. And may I have a second? Second. Thank you. The motion has been made and seconded. All those in favor say yay. 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 Any opposed? We are adjourned. I hereby call to order this reorganizational meeting of the Board of Education of the Wilmette Public Schools District 39 for Tuesday, April 23rd, 2019. Uh, and I will seek a motion at this time to... Oh, sorry, we're missing John. All right. I'm calling it to order, but we're going to wait a second. Here he comes. We don't have to call a roll for this? Mm-hmm. Oh, we do? After we... Um, oh, after we... Uh, after, not until we get them appointed. Oh, okay. We already called the order without you. Sorry, John. Okay. At this time, I will seek an a, excuse me seek a motion to appoint a president pro tem. I move that we should appoint the president pro tem. Great. And may I have a second? I got to say my name. Uh, so you, uh, so we have to made, yeah you have to move to okay. I I move to appoint Dr. Lechner as the president pro tem. Great. And may I have a second? Second. Do I have any objections from the Board of Education to having Dr. Lechner as president pro tem? Okay. Great. Hearing none, Dr. Lechner is appointed president pro tem by general consent. Thank you. And this is once every two years I get an opportunity to uh, hold the gavel. All right. <laughs> <laughs> but officially for the record, I can officially certify that the uh, April 2nd, 2019 Consolidated General Election as canvassed by Cook County Clerk Karen Yarbrough's office at Amy Pollan, Aaron Stone, and Frank Panzica are winners for the District 39 member, members of the Board of Education. And I'm going to ask you to come to the podium so we can recite the oath of office. Okay, please raise your right hand and repeat as after me. I, Frank Pinsley, do solemnly swear that I will faithfully discharge the duties of the office of member of the Board of Education, Wilmette School District 39, 
in accordance with the Constitution of the United States, the Constitution of the State of Illinois, and the laws of the State of Illinois, to the best of my ability. I further swear that I shall, I shall respect taxpayer interests by serving as a faithful protector of the school district's assets. I shall, I shall encourage and respect the free expression of opinion by my fellow members of the Board of Education and others who seek a hearing before the board while respecting the privacy of students and employees. I shall. I shall recognize that a member of the Board of Education has no legal authority as an individual and that decisions can be made only by a majority vote at a public board meeting. I shall. I shall abide by majority decisions of the board while retaining the right to seek changes in such decisions through ethical and constructive channels. As part, As part of the Board of Education, I shall accept the responsibility for my role in the equitable and quality education for every student in the school district. I shall. I shall foster with the board extensive participation of the community, formulate goals, define outcomes, and set the course for Wilmette School District 39. I shall. I shall assist in establishing a structure and an environment designed to ensure all students have the opportunity to attain their maximum potential through a sound organizational framework. I shall. I shall strive to ensure a continuous assessment, student achievement, and all conditions affecting the education of our children in compliance with state law. I shall. I shall serve as education's key advocate on behalf of students and our community schools to advance the vision for Wilmette Public School District 39 and and I shall I shall strive to work together with the superintendent to lead the school district toward fulfilling the vision the board has created fostering excellence for every student in the areas of academic skills knowledge citizenship and personal development congratulations welcome aboard Having seated our board, will the clerk please call the roll? Here. 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 Great. The next item of business is the election of board officers. I seek nominations for the office of president. I would like to nominate Lisa Schneider Fabes to be the next president of the. D39 Board of Education. Lisa Fabes has been nominated as president of the board. Are there any other nominations? Seeing none, Lisa Fabes is board president by acclamation. And now we will find our seats. All right. I seek nomination for vice president. I would like to nominate Frank Panzica to be uh, vice president of the D39 Board of Education. A board member offers Frank Panzica to be nominated as vice president. Are there any no other nominations? Seeing none, Frank Panzica is vice president by acclamation. Uh, in District 39, the superintendent serves as the appointed secretary for the Board of Education. Are there any objections to Dr. Lechner serving as the board secretary? Seeing none, Dr. Lechner is appointed secretary of the Board of Education by acclamation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> be a 
long journey. <laughs> In District 39, the business office manager serves as the appointed treasurer for the Board of Education. Are there any objections to Mrs. Crispino serving as the board treasurer? Seeing none, Mrs. Crispino is appointed the treasurer of the Board of Ad Education by acclamation. I, uh, whoop, wrong page. Uh, information items, Dr. Lechner. Yes, the first one is the 2019-20 uh, board calendar, and we've given you a draft of the, the, the school board calendar for next year, and you will be voting on that during the consent agenda. Are there any questions? Are there any questions? Board policy approval. Yes, and here is our the Board of Education policy manual, and each new school board needs to approve this and indicating that you're gonna support and use this to guide the work of District 39. Um, and you'll be voting on that in the consent agenda as well. Uh, now's the time for public comment. This is an opportunity for the audience to address the board. Are there any audience members at this time who would like to speak? Please come forward to the podium. I must remind guests to use the microphone, state your name and community of residence by the, uh, by, and by board directive, you are allowed three minutes. Great, thank you. Um, I'm Missy Parks from Wilmette, and I just wanna to say to our newly seated um, board, thank you in advance for your time, dedication, and leadership, and a special congratulations to our newly elected members. Um, we, my husband and I, are expecting great things from you, so thank you. <laughs> thank you. Is there anyone else who'd like to speak? Okay, moving on to uh, action items. The board needs to approve District 39 policies and the Board of Education meeting calendar for 2019-2020. Vice President, will you please proceed with the motions? I move to approve the adoption of the Wilmette Public School District 39 Board of Education policies and administrative guidelines and procedures. Separately or together? Go ahead. Thank you. Yes, I move to approve the calendar of dates for regular meetings of the Board of Education and to set the location of the regular meetings as the McCallion Education Center, 615 Locust Road, Wilmette, Illinois, 60091. May, um, may I have a motion a to approve? Oh, a second? A second. You made the first. Oh, sorry. May I have a second? I second it. Motion having been made and seconded, will the clerk please call the roll? John yes. Frank yes. Amy yes. 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 Motion carries. Oops. Thank you. Motion carries. Um, conference items. Is there any old business? Any new business? Any good in welfare? Yeah. I just want to say uh, welcome to our new board members. I'm very excited to have you on the board. And thank you very much for standing for election, and thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. I concur. Welcome, everyone. Uh, may I seek a motion to adjourn to executive session to discuss collective bargaining and specific personnel? At the risk of sounding Capra-esque, I want to say how happy I am to serve. Um, once I knew that I was going to be on the board, every time I've seen kids in the Jewel or staffing a lemonade stand or playing baseball outside my window, I can see Hibber Hibbard Park. I thought, I bet those are D39 kids and I can't wait to serve them. So I'm glad to be here and in service of the community, especially the kids. Thank you. May I seek a motion to adjourn to executive uh, session to discuss collective bargaining and specific personnel? I move to adjourn to executive session to discuss collective bargaining and specific personnel. May I have a second? A second. Motion having been made and seconded, will the clerk please call the roll? John, are you ready? Yes. 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 Motion, motion carried. We are now adjourned to executive session.
hard. That's the biggest. That's, that's the biggest. Uh,